Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Victor and I'm an international student from Nigeria, currently based in Cologne, Germany. I'm also an incoming PhD candidate at the University of Warwick in the UK. So today we'll be talking about um, standardized tests and whether or not you should take standardized tests and which of the standardized tests you should take. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think it does. So particularly we'll be focusing on the IELTS, that's the IELTS or the TOEFL and um, GRE and GMAT. These are arguably the most um, the most popular standardized tests um, postgraduate students um, need to take in most situations to get into top um, universities around the world. So if you're new, this is a channel dedicated to talking about how to get admission and full scholarships into top universities around the world. So let's get into the video. Um, standardized tests are of different types. Some of them are geared towards um, testing your language proficiency. Like the IELTS and the TOEFL, these are geared towards um, testing your language proficiency. Then you have um, the GMAT and, and um, the GRE. Those ones are majorly about um, testing your quantitative and your verbal reasoning capacities. So let's begin with the language proficiency test. So IELTS, International English Language Test System. So it's um, a, a language proficiency test that most um, universities require in the UK for non-English speakers, for non-native English speakers. But there's a bit of a confusion here because there are a number of countries in Africa, in Asia, in other places that do have um, English as the official language but are not native speakers of English. So there is um, there is a bit of a confusion whether those who speak English as their legal franca but do not have English as a, as a native language, whether they should or should not take the IELTS. So if you are confused about this, I think it's um, better to consult your university to check whether there's a waiver for your country. Most universities have this English language section where they tell who needs to do a language proficiency test and who doesn't need to do. And sometimes they say it's optional for some people and it's compulsory from some other people. So it's good to check and um, to verify whether you need the, the English language test or not. I did the IELTS, um, for instance, I think that was in 2006 or 2007. And I also did the GRE, but I'll talk about the GRE some other time. So if you're applying for a scholarship and you're thinking of which of the standardized tests to do, it's good to consult your university first of all. So if they mention nothing about standardized tests, or if there's a waiver that um, you don't need to um, present a, an English proficiency certificate, then lucky you. But if they said you must provide an English um, proficiency certificate, then you have to do either the IELTS or the TOEFL. But if they say it is optional, yeah, it gets very tricky. If it is optional, then you might be tempted not to take the exam because it is optional. But remember, it is a, you're applying not just for admission, but also for a scholarship. So there might be several other applicants who will be ready to take the exam and that might give them um, the extra edge. So if you have the time, you have the resources to take the exam, even though it is optional for you, I think um, I will advise that you take the exam. It would um, be a boost to your application, I believe. And it puts you on a higher stead um, compared to other, other applicants. So this is IELTS. TOEFL is also a similar proficiency, language proficiency test, and they have similar structures. They test your reading abilities, your writing abilities, your listening abilities. And there's a third one, I think writing as well. So they test these four parts. Why else is majorly for UK and European universities? Um, TOEFL is majorly for American universities. Though there are a few American universities um, that accept the IELTS, and a number of um, UK and European universities that accept the TOEFL. But be careful, check the, the university you're applying to, because some universities do not accept TOEFL at all, and some universities also in the US do not accept IELTS at all. So you have to be careful, check with your universities to verify which, um, which um, exam you should take. And if you want to take both of them, well, if you have the resources to do that, that's fine. The problem with these exams is that they're often quite expensive, because they're international exams, and um, 
if you're coming from a developing country, you have to, uh, because of the exchange rates, when the, the, the fee for this exam is converted into the local currency of that developed, um, developing country, it becomes um, an, an exorbitant amount of money. Uh, when I took mine, I had to um, save for a number of months and um, it was quite a, an unpleasant experience while saving, I must confess, but I had to invest in myself and I think it paid off at the end of the day. So you might have to save a number of um, for a number of months depending on your financial condition or ask parents friends to, to raise the money for these exams so as i said if your university or the university you are applying to do not require this test or give you a waiver because of the country you come from lucky you which is compulsory well there's no other option than to take it and if it's optional i would advise that you take it because then you're applying for a scholarship so let's go to the 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 GRE. The GRE is um, a mostly a quantitative and a verbal um, exam. So quantitative, you have to do with numbers, um, geometry, calculus, and things like that. While the verbal part is by is a normal reading comprehension and um, vocabulary, synonyms, and I think things we did in high school, they're a little bit of an advanced um, level. And I think there's another part of the um, GRE what they call analytical writing and then they present you with a passage and you have to find um, inconsistencies in the passage inconsistency in um, reasoning so the passage is fixed and well written but you have to look in between the sentences and see where there's an error in reasoning and part of critical writing so that's um, what the GR is all about there's also the GMAT but most universities do not require the GMAT that much it's mostly for those applying for MBA, I think. So generally, universities um, require GRE, mostly American universities. So I think you should also check with your university if they accept or not. I know most American universities do for postgraduate studies. Why in the UK, a few of them, especially those if you're applying for a quantitative course, for instance, for instance, mathematics, finance, econometrics. Some universities will um, advise you in, in the UK and other parts of the world to do the GRE. But in the US, it's almost standard, almost standard. You can get a few exceptions here and there, but it's almost standard for you to do a GRE. And the cost of mark for a GRE is, um, it depends on the university. Um, it's graded um, 170 for the uh, verbal reasoning part, 170 for the quantitative part, and um, six, in the analytical writing parts. Usually they say get above um, 300 when you combine both, but universities have different rules and I think it's safe to just get the highest you can get. Above 300, above 310, can do above 320, that's fine. And in both components. So make sure you get good grades in both components. Up to, if you can get up to 116 in the quantitative part, up to 116 in the verbal part, do 4 or 5 or even 6 in the analytical writing, then that will be super. And for the IELTS, IELTS is, I think it's um, over nine. Then for most universities, they will say seven or some six. But to be on the on the on the safer on the safer ground, I think seven eights is um, better for this um, for IELTS. For for um, TOEFL, I think it's over 120, 130. I did the IELTS, so I'm not very fast with the TOEFL. But I think it's, when you see the admissions um, requirements, TOEFL most of them they, they they require. 100 or 110 so or 120 depending on the the university so do your best so what on the question what um standardized test should you do so it depends on your university depends on the country you're going to study and remember when the university um, says that um, the test is optional if you're applying for a scholarship you need to meet more than the basic requirements. In other words, if they say, we'll get six for admission into this course, get six in IELTS. But you know you're not just um, applying for admission, you're also applying for a scholarship. So you have to go beyond six and get a seven or eight. The same thing um, um, applies to the, um, to the GRE. They say, oh, it's optional. You're applying for a scholarship, remember. There might be somebody there writing the GRE already and also applying for the scholarship. So imagine you're there with your good results and your good recommendation. And there's another candidate also with a good result, good recommendation and a good IELTS or a good GRE um, result. So if you have the resources, or even if you don't have the resources, you can go around and 
and see how you raise the, the resources to take the exams. And then I think it would boost, overall boost your application, your application um, package. So if you are applying to a top university in the US, for instance, I think for postgraduate, it's almost, almost impossible to invade the GRE. Yeah, it's almost in, impossible to uh, invade the GRE in the US for most top universities. In the UK, not so much. And for the language um, proficiency, for those who are not native speakers of English, and um, check with your university to see whether you have a waiver or not. And if you have a waiver, good for you. If it is optional, try to do it still. And even if you have a waiver, but you just want to take this um, um, exams to boost your, your chances, I think it's I think it is important. I think my first um, scholarship in London, I used the, the IELTS. And although they, I think they said it was optional for Nigeria, but I took the exam because I knew I was probably going to apply to more universities, more than one university. So I, I decided to do the exam and I passed, so I submitted the, the result. And then coincidentally, I used the same IELTS results to apply for my scholarship in Germany as well for the English for my English speaking course in the, my course taught in English language um, in Germany so I used one IELTS exam for two for two scholarships and um, it's good to also say this the IELTS result is valid for two years personally I think it should be longer than two years because I don't just forget the English language under under two years or after two years but that's the rule why the GRE result you can use it for five years so if you're doing the GRE exam this year, 2020, it's valid till 2025. For IELTS, if you're doing this year till 2022. So you could use the exams for multiple applications. You could use the IELTS or the GRE for multiple applications, multiple universities, and multiple years as well. So take advantage of it if you think you, you, you need to. And always consult with your university to be sure of um, which exams you should take and which you shouldn't take. So this is a short one guys on the standardized test. And until next time, stay inspired and stay blessed.